Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love guys. Now today's first story comes from Adventurous Aside 600 and says my fiance's best friend is making my life a living hell. My fiance has the biggest heart would literally give you the shirt, pants, and hat off his body if you asked for it. He's a recovering people pleaser, and I get it because I also used to be a people pleaser. We've been together for five plus years. A few months ago, I started picking up on his best friend making some not so nice comments towards me. I'm trying to be vague, but let's just say this friend is the type to read who in the room would be most affected by being picked on. And then he picks and picks and picks on them until they can't take it anymore. Nobody ever really holds him accountable for this. And unfortunately, I have somehow become his favorite target. I tried to put up with these comments, but it started getting really elaborate. The friend would make up lies about me saying things I never said. He once called me in front of all of our friends, my fiance included, just to yell, you are a bad friend, into the phone and then hang up. There's so much to it that I can't share because I'm trying to be somewhat anonymous. It started having an effect on me and my mental health and I ended up having a full breakdown where I told my fiancé how much this was all starting to hurt me. The first time I broke down over this, he said he would talk to his friend about teasing and messing with me less. He then told me his friend was sorry and that he'd be keeping an ear out for any other comment and he'd jump to my defense if it happened again. A few weeks later, I had a second breakdown over all this. The situation itself is hitting a very specific childhood trauma slash trigger for me, and he admitted that his friend didn't actually apologize. He actually said he was sorry I was too sensitive to understand his humor. At that point, I told my fiance my friendship with this person is over, and I want zero contact from here on out, even if it means I have to miss out on events and parties that I'd otherwise love to go to. He agreed with me that all of this is being done with the intention to get a rise out of me. And even if we try to get through to this friend, he's so diabolical that we could never fully trust him to not treat me at least a little bit shitty. My fiance kept asking if this meant he had to quit the project they're working on. I told him I would never tell him he had to because I know how much it means to him. But in all honesty, the fact that this person is treating me so poorly that I'm having physical stress reactions isn't enough for him to want to cut this person off does hurt a lot. The fact that it isn't a deal breaker for him is probably always going to sting a little. He's not confrontation at all, but I always knew that. But it's not about confrontation. It's about standing in my corner. I can't spend the rest of my life with someone who isn't in my corner. The friend is getting married to my best friend in a few months, and we're both supposed to be in the wedding, but I really have no clue how. I get a literal knot in my stomach any time his name is even mentioned now. I've seen this friend one time since all of this came to a head and he was over the top nice to me that it came off as cocky. I had the second breakdown a few days afterwards because I realized I'm possibly going to spend the rest of my life on edge and on guard any time this person is somewhat in my vicinity. Even if they aren't actively fucking with me. I don't know how to come to terms with the fact that my fiance was willing to lie to me on his shitty friend's behalf but he's not willing to stand in my corner against him. I think it'll always hurt. This guy was supposed to be the best man in our wedding, and as a result, we haven't been talking much about wedding plans. I think if he's still planning on this friend being in our wedding, I may have to call it off for my own sanity. And that sucks so bad. This is fucking eating me alive. I love my fiance so much. I love his big heart and the way he loves with all of it. Billy really loves some truly wretched people and I don't know if he'll enforce any boundaries with those people before the lack of boundaries become too much for me to handle. I'm just hurt and hurting and I just want whatever outcome to play out so I can stop feeling so guilty and awful all the time. But someone asked OP, they said, has your fiance defended you in any way? And OP said, not necessarily. He's non-confrontational, but he knows the behavior isn't sustainable. He agrees with me that his friend is awful with the intention of being awful. They have a project they've been a part of for over a decade and it means the universe to him and that's the biggest factor in all of this. 
he'd more than likely have to give that up. This entire situation is dog shit, and there are zero winners except for the arsehole. And before we went on, the project was there was a I found a comment from OP about what the project was. She said, fuck it, they're in a band together. There's four of them. It's been an ongoing project for over a decade, and my fiance is an entirely different human when he's on stage in the best way. Someone then asked OP, what does her best friend say about this behavior? OP says, I have my own feelings towards what she's going through. I think she's being love bombed and gaslit, and I've seen some proof of it with my own eyes. She was there for the bad friend comment and kind of defended him. I know she's so love struck that she's probably going to choose him and it kills me. But I'm trying really hard to step back in a way that doesn't totally burn my bridge with her in the end. When he gets that ring on her finger, I have a feeling he'll be a different man to her and she'll need support. I'll be there when she needs me. When OP was told she should walk away, OP said, I don't think I'm ready to make my peace with this comment quite yet. I hear it and I'm trying. Right before I met my fiance, I just cut out a vast majority of people, including one of my closest friends and a blood relative, for making me feel the same shitty small way my fiance's friend makes me feel. It's so much harder to burn those rotten bridges when they're not yours to burn. And that's a lot easier to say when you have no stakes in this, my guy. I'm in love with my partner and I know that this is eating him up just as much as it is me. Trust me when I say he holds himself accountable for his role in this and we've had many in-depth conversations about how his friend will forever be this way so long as everybody in his life enables him to be. It's hard to cut someone off even when they deserve it. I'm trying to show my fiance as much grace as I can because I know how hard it is to give up on someone you always hope would grow out of their awful behaviors. When OP was asked if there's any unresolved conflicts, OP said no. My friend and I haven't really had any conflict. Me and her were hanging at my place while our partners got ready to head to hers, and they ding dong ditched us twice. I heard the door a third time and ignored it because I assumed it was them again, and then the arsehole called me, speakerphone from my friend's phone, and told me it was a mutual friend that lived in the building and was looking for them for support. I tried to jokingly call him out for ding dong ditching, but that was when he yelled, you're a bad friend, into the phone and hung up. I was really embarrassingly distraught by this and expressed how it was affecting me and my, and me and my friend left an hour or two later after we sat in silence. I found out later from my fiance that all of our mutual friends, including him, were in the car and heard that conversation and everybody felt tense but nobody said anything to him. And it wasn't a joke and wasn't taken as a joke by anyone involved, not just me. After the friend who was knocking on the door went to find them, the arsehole called me just to make me feel bad for not opening the door. I could hear the friend that knocked saying, hey man, not a big deal, it's fine. Real quiet in the background, but no one else spoke up. Trust me, I know these examples seem like they shouldn't be getting to me, but this guy is poking every spot he can on me until he finds one that gives him a reaction. And then he digs and digs. It's not hard to be hurt and triggered when his literal intention is to hurt or trigger me. I know this isn't going to go on much longer. This is just bringing a little story into my head. Not quite the same scenario as it was like when my brother joined a new workplace and someone tried to, to pick on him in his first week. And um, <laughs> yeah, I'll explain after the update. So OP updates and says, never thought I'd actually update this account out of sheer fucking embarrassment. But I wanted to share this for those who encouraged me to put myself first. I want you all to know my partner absolutely came through and protected me in this. We spent all this time since my last post up until last week communicating and trying to find a resolution and walking through how it got this bad. He took a lot of accountability for that. This is not a case of me giving in. He understands fully that this only got so bad because it's never been handled correctly and he had a major hand in that. There were so many more layers to this than a Reddit post could have conveyed. The bottom line is we are closer than ever and after a lot of talking, we decided on my partner sending him a firm but not unkind message to his friend explaining the behaviors, explaining that they were hurting his partner and that it needed to stop. He asked to write up the first draft and we could go over it together to try and perfect it. Read it, please know the first draft my partner wrote was spot on, but I needed to read that it instantly shifted us into an us versus the problem mode when we'd been stuck butting heads for weeks. He laid everything out so clearly in ways that we hadn't discussed, so I know it came from him. 
we had to tone down a lot of the big emotions. We really truly gave the message his best shot to address the situation without being hostile. We knew the response would be bad no matter what, but I don't think anything could have fucking prepared us. This man went full scorched earth and blew up everything almost immediately. He insulted my partner. He told him these events didn't happen the way I claim they do. He demanded they meet up alone with a mediator. He even threatened to reach out to my partner's parents to fill them in, which is probably the moment we stopped taking his responses seriously. All of us are almost in our 30s. If once wasn't enough, he threatened it twice. We actually had to call them and warn them that he'd be showing up at their place later this week and not to open the door. There's still a good chance he'll attempt it. We stayed respectful throughout all of this, which I feel good about. We didn't stoop to his level. We didn't insult anyone. We asked for basic human respect and somehow it blew up spectacularly. In the end, we both received a massive wall of text from my now ex best friend, fully backing up a man and telling her side of the story, which is so insanely far off from what actually happened that all I can do is laugh. We've been shifting from crying to being dumbstruck to just straight up laughing because of the absurdity. I went into this thinking she was brainwashed, but it turns out I was wrong. They're a perfect match and I wish them all the best. I'm sending them one last message setting the record straight, which my partner and I decided together was the best approach apart from just ghosting. Before moving on from this entirely, I'm going to make it very clear this is done. Zero contact indefinitely and I will never look back. My partner and I both deserve way better friends and we both see that so clearly now. I'm so, so, so fucking glad I learned my friend's true colors before we dropped $800 on a hotel for their wedding. Thank you to everyone who was kind. Not only did I put myself first in the end, but my partner did too. We're going to take this week in stride and process it all. Grieve the friendships we once thought were forever. And at the end of the week, we have a conveniently timed vacation to my partner's family cottage. I think we're going to come out of this stronger because we already feel it. Again, thank you to those who had something productive to say. And I've made my peace with all the rest. I guess if the guy does something else outlandish, maybe I'll update. But for now, this chapter is closed. And I'm so ready for it to start collecting dust. So when OP was told victims of abusers do a 180 in their behavior to explain why her best friend is acting the way she is and shows the ex-friend's side. OP says, yeah, I definitely went into this thinking exactly what you just laid out but I refuse to set myself on fire to keep her warm. And the shit she said in her message about my partner is irredeemable. She can never be a part of our lives again after what was said, out of respect for me and my partner. Even if any part of me wanted to hold out hope for her. Hope this is a wake-up call for her, but it won't be me on the other line. And appreciate you and your kind words, friend. This has been hell, but I think we're both just glad to have an outcome. I'll always have love for her but it will be from a very large distance. And even if by some miracle we reconnect, we'll never be as close as we once were without some intense conversations and a lot of growth. Maybe not even then. I don't see that being the case for a very long time. I've made my peace with that. Someone said, how is the fiance handling the business with the ex-friend? And then says, as well as he can, he stepped down. He's going to find another project eventually. I know it. This has been so impossibly hard on both of us. But I know it's hitting him a bit more than me right now and I'm making sure to prioritize him and remind him he can feel that pain and mourn what was. And it's not an insult to me at all if that makes sense. I know what this meant to him. He did give it up. I'm so so sad he had to but I'm grateful for him for putting his foot down. He's going to be okay. Just need some time to grieve and process. There was a couple of comments after this one. Someone said about losing toxicity will greatly improve things and then I found this comment interesting from Salamalis who says, your life is a room full of alligators and kittens. Adding more kittens will do a bit to make life less stressful and more enjoyable. But getting rid of those alligators, damn. All that fear and anxiousness about how the alligator will react is gone. And now you can enjoy each kitten so much more because your daily fear is gone. Alligators and kittens, and life is so much better without any alligators. But I totally agree that getting rid of that toxicity is going to make your lives so much better in the end. And I'm glad that the fiance did take your side in this and, and back you up because it could have gone so much worse. We've just seen it one too many times, you know. 
And I found it impressive just how Opie is really understanding of that friendship at the same time. You know, what, what she's been through, the way she's been treated, yet she still understands it's going to take time to grieve and process the loss of a friendship. I know some people can do it in a click of a finger, but other people it still does take time because there's a lot of history there to process. But I was also telling you about my brother halfway through a bit of a different scenario. He was just joining a new job at an engineering company. Bit of a different time scenario. HR is pretty much non-existent in the space where they were. Well, let's just say it didn't exist. And my brother joins them one morning and they have a morning meeting with like the, the six or seven of them that are there and they introduce my brother. And they have this meeting and by the end of this meeting, this this dude who's quite a bit shorter than my brother calls out, well, hey, he, he's the new tea boy kind of thing. You know, someone that always makes the coffees, etc. Which isn't the end of the world, you know, I've seen that kind of thing in other places. It could have been seen as, you know, just trying to get someone involved or that kind of thing. But during the week, they're in the workshop working on whatever they do. And this guy continues to say, hey, tea boy, two sugars in mine, please. And carries on down this path whilst ribbing other co-workers to try to get them involved with this as well now let me just say this here as well i'm not sure why anyone would do this to my brother he he's not a small guy not in height wise but he's he's a, a pretty beefy guy and if you've ever heard any of my previous stories about this dude where he dragged the car out of his garage by tying it to the back of it and just driving off he, he takes no shit basically He's, he's changed a bit now. He's not like that anymore, but, you know, he wouldn't take any shit back in the day. It doesn't matter. You're nice to him. He's the nicest guy and will do anything for you. You piss him off or anything like that. Well, fucking you are done. So this guy in the workshop continues to escalate things using different names, derogatory names, like stepping it up a level each time. One day hid my brother's tools and my brother always bought his own tools. He buys his own tools. He likes to use his own tools. He has his own toolbox that he takes everywhere with him. Workplaces, of course. <laughs> He's not at the restaurant with his toolbox, which sort of initiated the first confrontation. My brother goes up to him and says, please don't hide my toolbox in the future. I paid a lot of money for this. It's my property. Don't move it again. Guy's like, oh yeah, sorry, T-boy. At which point my brother's getting frustrated, had enough of this bullshit, goes into the office, talks to the, the, the main manager there, as I mentioned, HR's non-existent, says to him like, you need to tone this guy down or he's going to get himself in trouble soon. He's taking the piss now and it's going too far and he's going to regret it. Manager's like, yeah, yeah, you know, like it's just the, the workshop kind of environment, bit of banter. Brother's like, no, banter's going too far now and I've had enough of it. My brother got on with most of the other people in this workshop but there's just this guy who's on a bit of a power trip and apparently he was like this before anyway but because my brother was new easy target about a week or so later they're having another meeting and you know they have this meeting in this square reception room and in the middle of it is like a kitchen worktop and that's the reception desk where they, they book in various items etc etc main boss is sat in one corner across the desk this other dude who's having a go at my brother is next to him, that side of the, and my brother's the other side of this reception desk. And they're just about to start meeting and the dude stops and says, oh, isn't T-Boy gonna make us some teas before we get started? And at that point, you know, as I said, my brother takes no shit. I don't condone violence and stuff, but at this point, I don't give a shit. <laughs> he reaches across, grabs him, pulls him across the top of the desk, has him literally scruffed by his t-shirt around his neck and is like say that again say that again to my fucking face of course then the rest of the room erupts they're like whoa 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 calm down calm down my brother like points at the boss and says you can fuck off as well you've done nothing about this boss then swiftly sits back down <laughs> which my brother then explains to this guy pinned to the floor you carry on like that i'm gonna slap the shit out of you basically and pretty much there things de-escalated and guess what that guy went and made the tea. <laughs> I never really asked what happened to that guy afterwards, though, if the relationship was good or not. I think it must have been OK because well, my brother moved on after a few years and apparently that guy is still at that company. My brother's much more chill these days, though. Bless him. Love him to bits. But anyway, I've gone on long enough. Now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of the original story, by the way? Just a huge thank you for being here. 
truly your love your support your time really means the world to me so thank you so so much and hopefully i will see you in the next one take care and much love